Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a second year medical student and welcome to Ovi Med. Alright, so in this week's video, I'm going to be giving you 5 tips on how to survive your first year of medical school. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So at number 1, meet as many people as you can. Make as many friends as possible. I know it's easier said than done, especially with the current sanitary situation, but you're gonna be in the same class with the same people for the following years. They go through the same thing as you are, and it's really important to like have people that you can rely on, you know, get help from, and that you can help in return when they need it. This is even more important for international students since you're gonna be going in a new country with new people, you don't know anyone, you don't know anything, and then you're really gonna be on your own, you're really gonna be isolated. If there is a time difference, then even more so. So make sure that you get to know as many people as possible. If they're exactly in the same boat as you, then even better. If they have the same background, it's just gonna be way easier, but get to know as many people as you can. This also applies to older year students. Now, these older year students are gonna have gone through every single thing that you're going through right now. They're gonna have the same courses, the same professors, the same lecturers, the same exams, more or less, I guess. And they can give you advice on maybe how to tailor your study, um, things to look out for, maybe things to do in the city, uh, maybe some extracurricular activities, something like that. Don't underestimate how important that living experience is. Now for number two, you need to establish a good study routine. Now this is an extremely important point because if you leave everything for the last minute, that's just not gonna work. Maybe it worked for you during high school or undergrad even, but in medical school, trust me, it's not gonna work. Especially if you only have one exam for three months of courses or even four months of school. So trust me, that won't work. In medical school, there's quite a lot more content, obviously, and all of that in a shorter period of time. So if you're able to establish a good study routine, not only you're gonna be able to keep up with the material, you're gonna be up to date, you're gonna understand your lectures better, and then at the end, you're not gonna to have to cram everything in two weeks. By being up to date, I find that it's just so much easier to understand the following content, because often what happens is that you learn a concept and then the next concept builds upon the previous one. So like everything sort of like piles up on top of one another. And if you don't understand like the basics, like just the base of a certain concept, then you're just not gonna be able to understand uh, as well, I guess, the following more precise, more detailed concept that follow afterwards. So make sure to stay up to date in your courses. Also by having a good study routine, it's also gonna be easier to start studying. You know, it's always hard to sort of like get the ball rolling and get that momentum or get that initial motivation or however you wanna call it. But every time you go to the library, for example, and you sit at a seat, you know it's for studying. And then every time you go there, you start studying for whatever, how long, then your brain is gonna know, it's gonna be like automatic, that every time you go there, it's a study. And then it's gonna be just easier and easier over time that every time you go there, you just start studying, it's gonna be automatic. So by having a good study routine, it's gonna be easier to manage your time as well because you're gonna lose less time into like priming yourself to start studying. And then it's also gonna give you more time to pursue other interests like extracurriculars, research, uh, going out with friends or whatever you're into. Then at number three, you must continue your extracurriculars. On the topic of extracurriculars, obviously you must continue to practice those. Obviously, if you play ice hockey and then you move to Miami, it's gonna be a bit harder to keep doing as compared to if you move to Montreal or Toronto in Canada. But if you have hobbies or things you just enjoy doing, keep on doing those because if you stop everything and just study, you're just gonna go crazy. You need to have a sort of balance between studying, extracurricular, seeing friends and stuff like that. You can't just sit at your desk all day and just study all day, every day. It's easy to get carried away in the library and just explore a new topic that you find super interesting and just study all the time and then you get really good grades, but like, what's the point? You're already in medical school. Grades don't really matter. They don't really make a difference at all. It's pass or fail most of the time anyways. You must study for yourself, for your future patients, not for like that grade that you wanna get in your class because like no one cares. You need to diversify yourself. That's how I think you can succeed in medical school, by being diverse, by having a good balance between studying and your outside personal life. If you just study for four years or five years nonstop during medical school and you're thinking, 
oh yeah, okay, I'll just take it easier in residency when I match into the specialty that I want to get into. Yeah, well, you just wait until you get into residency. You'll see then. Then once you get into residency, you're thinking, oh, okay, yeah, right now I'm gonna work hard to get into that fellowship that I want. Then you get into your fellowship and then you must work even harder. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna wait until I'm an attending, you know, to live my life, to go on vacation, whatever. And then you become an attending and then you look back and you just lost 10 years of your life just studying in the books nonstop instead of going on vacations from time to time, you know, enjoying your life, your part times, whatever you want. You just study, you just lost 10 years of your life not doing anything else but studying. What I think is really good about extracurriculars as well is that it offers you the opportunity to disconnect from your studies. It allows you to completely disconnect from whatever you're doing and sort of like recharge your battery so that when you go back to studying, you can come back even stronger. Uh, let, let's say you just go for a workout or something, then when you come back, you're fresh, you take a shower and you're ready to start studying again. Number four, don't buy any textbooks. I mentioned this in my videos in the past, but unless you want to pay hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a book that you're only going to use once and then never again, and then that you're going to struggle to sell the next year because a new edition is going to come out, don't buy them. Don't buy them. Don't buy them. Generally speaking, you're not even going to have time to read a whole chapter in a certain disease. It's just a waste of time. All the content that you need to know for your exam or to become a future physician is going to be inside your lecture slides. Your lecturer is going to have presented that information to you. There's no need to go outside and read a whole 70 page chapter on like whatever disease that you're studying at the moment. If you want to get more info about something and you don't understand what's on your lecture slides, then there's so many resources out there. You have Google for one, you have Wikipedia, you have YouTube, you have amazing resources such as Ninja Nerd, which is on YouTube or Osmosis and stuff like that. So, I mean, when are you really gonna go and check into textbooks? And like, you need to put things in perspective. When are you gonna have time to read 70 pages on like cardiac failure or something like that? When your teacher only had two slides on that topic, like, is it really worth it? And if you absolutely want to have the reference textbook because your teacher says that, oh, I'm going to pick questions from this and this chapter. And at the end of the chapter, there's like review questions that might come up on the exam. Then yeah, sure. That, that makes sense to buy the textbook. However, you also need to realize that there's like free PDF versions that you can find online pretty easily. So then do you want to carry like a big brick and lost like $300 or would you rather just stick to the PDF and have the questions at the end? I mean, you do you. At the end of the day, it's still personal preference. But if you don't really mind having online version, well, just don't buy it. You're going to waste a lot of money. The only, I guess, course that would recommend having a book is for anatomy. So I guess you can go for the Gray's Anatomy, especially if you're a visual learner. And if it's just easier for you to see the muscles and actually like, you know, be able to learn them off better, then sure, but I guess Gray's Anatomy or Netters, I think is the only book I would recommend getting from medical school. Um, I mean, for now, maybe the first day later on, but I'm not there yet. Maybe in a few years, I mean, surely in a few years, but yeah. Anyways, let's move to point number five. All right, so at number five, you need to learn how to become independent. Most of you have already become independent when you moved out for your undergrad, for example. But if you didn't, well, then you must learn how to cook, for example, how to manage your money, how to manage and to take care of your own mental health. It's things like that that I mean by becoming independent. Now, these are all very valuable life skills that you must possess as early as possible. For food, for example, you can't just eat junk food all day, every day. That's going to really have a negative impact on your health later on. In terms of money, you can't just spend everything on anything without looking on how much it costs or having a budget or something like that because eventually you're gonna run out of money, especially with how expensive medical school is. By the way, I made a video on how expensive medical school is if you wanna check it out right here. And then for mental health, well, you're gonna go through a lot of hard things, especially if you're an international student, you never moved out of your parents' house, you know, there's a lot of hardships that are gonna come your way. You're know, gonna have to be alone in a new country, not know anyone. And then if there's a pandemic, for example, that's gonna be even harder. But learning good, healthy coping mechanisms is really gonna go a long way because if you're able to develop good techniques for coping with your mental health or whatever early on, it's really gonna pay off later on when you're gonna be really busy, you're not gonna have time to do a lot of things. So like, just don't put it off to the side, don't brush it off because later on it's gonna bite you in the butt, trust me. Cause like, you're gonna go through a lot of hard stuff. So the earlier you know how to deal with that, the better off you're gonna be. 
All right, so those were my five tips on how to survive your first year of medical school. There could have been plenty more, but that would have been such a long video. If you have any tips, write them down in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at ov.med. If you didn't see my previous videos, I'm gonna link them right here. And see you in the next week's video.